Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. In today's episode of the Pong series, what we're going to be doing is setting up some rendering text to the screen so that we can uh, render the scores. And then we're also going to set up a simple main menu that allows you to start the game or exit and you'll be taken to this main menu if you lose the game. Okay. Um, so in the last video, if you were watching, what we got to was we had this little ball if we run the code. And depending on where it hits the paddle, bounces off at an angle. And so we'll just be adding to this. You should check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we want to render text to the screen. We will create a class and we'll call this text. Um, some things this text class is going to need. It's going to need a string, which is the string that will be displaying to the screen. We're going to need a font, and that's just going to be the font that we're using. We can import that from java.ot. And then we're also going to need a x, y position for the font. Where do we want to display this text? So we'll just create a simple constructor. We will take in the text, the font, and the x and y. And then we'll just set all these inside the constructor. So font equals font, this.text equals text, this.x equals x, and this.y equals y. All right. <clears throat> And then we're going to want a draw method. So we'll say draw graphics 2D, G2. And this is really easy to draw some text with Java uh, ought. So literally all we got to do is say g2.set color. So we'll set the color first. We'll just set it to white. g2.set font, set it to the font that we passed in. And we'll say g2.draw string. And then we'll say we'll draw the text and then it takes in a float for the x and y position so we'll cast our x and y to floats so we'll say float x and float y and then this will draw the text to the screen okay let's test that out real quick so we'll go to our window method or our window class and then inside the draw method we'll just uh, add in we'll say text text equals new text it's expecting the text we'll say sample a font, we'll get to that in a second, and then the X and the Y, we'll say 100, 100. Okay, now the font, we'll say font, font equals new font. This font will encapsulate like the uh, font family, so like Times New Roman, Arial, Consolas, whatever font you want to use. Um, it has to be installed on the system. If it's not, it's not going to find it. So I'll say Times New Roman, because that's a standard font that should be installed on most systems, I believe. Um, the style, so like plain, italicized bold we'll just leave it plain and then the size so that's just like the size in pixels so we'll just say 14 pixels we'll pass in this font to our text and then we will say text dot draw g2 so that should draw sample something that's a sample in times new roman font size 14 at position 100 100 so we see we get that thing that says sample right up there too so that's great that's working perfectly um, next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to set up a couple of scores. So we will just add on a couple variables up here. So we'll say public text, um, and then we'll say left score and right score, which will represent the player score on the left and the AI score on the right, respectively. So inside of our init function, we will initialize these to be zero because the scores are zero. So, and let's actually we'll keep a score counter too, just so that we have that as well. So right below this, we'll also have an integer value, and this is the left score, and we'll call this the right score, and then we'll say these are the left score text, right score text, okay? So we have the left score and right score, and then we have the text for the left score and the text for the right score, which are different variables. So we will initialize left score to zero, initialize right score to zero, because nobody has any points in the beginning of the game. And then what we'll say is we'll say left score text, equals new and then we'll say text and we will say um, left score and that's gonna that might throw an error we'll see in just a second then we'll say new font give it times new roman um, and then we'll say font dot plain and we'll say size like 20 because we want this to be kind of big and then we'll uh, try it at like 10 pixels, 10 pixels, just sort of get it up there in the left hand corner. And it says we got an error because we don't have a string. So let's overload that constructor to also take in a 
integer value. That way we can just switch it. So we'll go back into here, copy this, and then we'll just say integer. So then we can say this dot text equals, and then we'll just say quotation plus text, which will cast this integer to a string. So that should take care of everything for us, which is really nice and easy. Okay. And then we go back to our window, error is gone, set up the right score text. We'll say it equals a new text, right score, new font, times new Roman. And then we'll say font.plane, size is 20. And then we'll say screen.width or constants.screen width minus 10, constants. Oh, and then we'll leave it at 10. So same y, different x. And then we'll actually want to subtract the font size too. So we'll say minus 16 just to make sure we get that all the way over. So and then we will update these in the draw method. We'll just say uh, left score text dot draw g2, right score text dot draw g2. And we should see zeros in the left hand corner and the right hand corner. Let's see if we need to reposition those, in which I think we do because we don't see anything. So what's going on here? Let's move these down. I have a feeling it's because we can't see it because of the top bar. So we'll move that to y position 30. 30, let's see. <clears throat> Oh, I see it peeking out of there. Let's move it down a little bit more. Move it to 50. 50. Whoops. There we go. Run that one more time. There we go. So we see those little scores. Those are really small. I want mine to be much bigger than that. So let's make a few constants, make this a little bit easier on ourselves. So um, leave that. That doesn't need to change. Okay. So we'll say public static final string. No, we'll say integer. Uh, text y pose equals 50 seemed like a good position public static final integer text size let's do 40 because 20 seems very small so we'll replace these real quick go into our window this is going to be constants dot text size right over here do the same thing constants dot text size and then change the y position to constants dot text y pose copy that replace this guy okay and then let's add in one more which is this 10 which is the x position so we'll go back into our constants and we'll say public static final int text x pose equals 10 replace that real quick so we'll go back into the window Replace this, replace this, constant. Oh, spelled out right, constant. There we go. And then fix this guy up. And then this is going to be constants.text size. So a very long string, but or very long line of code, but it's just doing something very simple. So text size. I will space this out just so that you can see it a little bit better. And then this is going down here. There we go. Okay, so let's see how this looks and then tweak some things if we need to. Okay, we need to move them down a little bit more. Go into constants, y pose. Let's say like 70. That should be good. Nice. Okay, that looks good to me. Uh, that's another glitch that we will have to fix in just a second. But <clears throat> right now the texts are there, but when the ball goes past me, it does not do anything. So let's fix that real quick inside of our ball class because this is where it's checking to see where the ball's position is so this is where we're checking to see if it's hitting with the paddle and then after this what we want to check and see is if it's off the edge of the screen or if it's behind either of the paddles because if it's behind either of the paddles then that means somebody has made a score so right after we update the position we will say if this dot rect dot x is less than zero then the player has made a score. Otherwise, the AI has made a score. And right now we have no reference to either of those score texts. So we can probably pass those in up here and just keep track of them in here. Um, this isn't the best method. There's definitely way better methods that you can do all this, but this is the easiest way. So we'll just do that. So we'll say text, left score, text, text, right score, text. We will take these in as parameters as well. And then we'll say right here, uh, we'll keep track of those as well. Text, left score, text, 
write score text and then add those in the initializer and the right one cool so now we have a reference to those so we can simply say okay if this dot rectangle dot x is less than zero then clearly the ai has scored since it's gone off the left boundary of the screen and so doing this let's actually say if um, the rectangles x plus the rectangles width is less than and we'll say the left paddles x that way we're checking just to see if it's gone past the paddle and that will get rid of that weird glitch we saw just a second ago okay so then we know that the left score text needs to be incremented so we will say let's let's actually instead of taking a reference hmm yeah we'll, we'll keep a reference to those and then we'll have to update the integer score value as well okay so now that we have that we can say left score text dot text equals and what we're going to want to do first we'll actually get the integer value of what the score is so we'll say left score equals and then left score text dot text and we want to cast this to an integer so we'll say integer dot parse int and we give it that string and that should parse it to an integer we'll say left score plus one and then we'll say that um, the left score text dot text equals uh, quotation plus left score so that will cast it to a string and then we've just updated the score okay uh, let's go into the window since we're going to be doing all of that in there we don't really need to keep track of the left score or the right score as integers anymore we can actually just leave those out of the way we'll say zero zero because that's what we're initializing them as and that should all be good and then we're getting an error here that's because we need to send it the left score text and the right score text now okay we fix that now if we press play we should see if the ai hits it and it goes past our screen we should see that zero change to oh a java nulling pointer exception so let's see what's going on there so it says in ball java 69 go here to the ball why are we getting this error well that's because we initialized the ball before we initialized the text so the ball is getting null pointers there so we should actually change this We'll initialize the text up here then the ball will have access to them when we initialize the ball so we run that one more time and then we should see uh the right hand score go to one what we're actually saying is our score just keep going up and up and up so first of all we did the wrong score second of all it's not stopping so we will go to the ball uh, first of all this should be <laughs> the right score and then right score plus plus and then right score text equals that and we will change this to right score text as well and it's going to go up and up and up because every update it's going to run this again and it sees that the ball is still back there so let's actually reset the ball's position too so that um, it's reset in the center of the screen and it's going back towards us again since we missed it um, you can change it to go towards the ai if you think the ai should get it since we missed it um, i'm just going to send it towards us so we'll say uh, this dot rect dot x equals and then we'll say constants dot screen width over two it's close enough good enough for me and then we'll say this dot rec dot y equals constants dot screen height over two we'll reset the velocity to we'll say this dot vx equals and we'll just give it the original velocities that it had in the beginning so 10 and minus 150 whoops 150 there we go so that should be good that should take care of that we should see it go past the left side um, ai gets a point and it starts going but it starts going way up it's because we switched these so this should be minus 150 and this should be 10 and we'll make that positive so that's going towards us okay so if we run this again it should just go the same exact way yep he gets a point goes to one then we go Let's just add in another uh, another function or if statement here that basically checks on the AI side and does exactly the same thing. And then we will basically have our score counter done. So we'll say if this ball's x plus uh, this ball's width. No, if, if the ball is x. So we want to check if the left side of the ball is greater than the right side of the right paddle. If that's greater than the right paddle dot x plus the right paddle dot width 
then we have the same condition. Uh, we made a point and we basically do all the exact same things except we're gonna say left score and we're gonna say that equals the left score text dot text and then we're gonna add one to that. Reset the left scores text to be that and then we're gonna uh, set the X and the Y and then we're gonna change the X to be positive. It's gonna go towards the AI since the AI missed a point. Let's turn the AI off real quick. <laughs> that way we can get it past them for sure. So we'll just go into our window and where we're updating the AI, we'll just turn that off. Comment that out real quick. Go back in. And then it should be going at the same direction, the same velocity it's going now, and we get a point. We get another point, sweet. That's working perfectly. Okay, now let's add a simple win condition. Um, if the score is greater than 11, uh, which is just like standard half game of ping pong. So we'll just use that. You can change it to whatever you want. So we'll say public static final int win score equals 11. And then we'll go back into the ball. And if the right score is there, if right score is greater than constants dot win condition or win score. For now, we'll just say system dot out dot print. Uh, this is the right player one. Otherwise, then we'll check down here. If the left score is greater than or equal to, we should say the equal to, we'll fix that in a second. Then we'll say system dot out dot print line. The left player wins. Okay. And then we will change this to greater than or equal. Let's change that win score to just one. And then we should see it print that we won as soon as it goes past the AI. Oh, and I turned it back on. Let me turn it back off again real quick. So we'll go to the window, turn the AI controller off one more time. Okay. And so down in our console down here, we should see it say that we won once this goes past him. So it says left player wins, sweet. So now we can put whatever condition we want to happen in there, which will be the condition that will switch us back to the main menu. So. Hey guys, so while I was editing that video, I realized that it ran very long. It was about 40 minutes because <laughs> I wanted to try and just complete everything in one more video. Uh, I think that was just a bit too long, so I'm cutting it off short here, and then I'll pick up with the next part in the next video. Also, stay tuned for the next video. At the end of it, I'm going to give a sneak peek of what I'm working on now, which is a snake game, and then also a physics engine, which I'll be, impl which I'll be going through how to do in future tutorials. So... Stay tuned for those, and if you like this, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the, in the next and last video. Thanks guys, see ya.